Karaj, thanks for saying with us. Uh, markets are in a, in a corrective mode and that's really on expected lines because we've put a good Monday behind us. Frankly, 25 points here or there on the Nifty, 100 points here or there on the Sensex, that's not a trend indicator or a lead indicator of what really lies ahead. But Conquer or Container Corporation, that company often is a lead indicator of which way economy is headed. The stock of late has been slightly volatile because one of the largest global emerging market for Nabidine has got some redemption pressures and they're reducing their stake in Conquer. But that's not the case for the chat. The case for the chat is that freight volume outlook based on recent trends and attraction. They've approved two multi-model logistic parks and eight bankers have been shortlisted for another 5% stake sale. Uh, by the government. That may not happen, that may happen, that's debatable, but I want to understand uh, from the CFO the entire business environment. Uh, uh, P. Alirani joins us. Uh, good morning, thank you for joining us. My first question to you would be that what are the trends you are seeing in the entire, uh, you know, freight movement? If I look at the, if I look at the year-on-year -year da data, there seems to be a drop at least in commodities, iron ore, coal, and other basic commodities which you transport. Oh, no. Uh, we do not transport iron ore and coal. We transport containers, other cargo which are containerizable, not iron ore and uh, coal. Those are railway commodities. They are transported on bulk trains. So, sorry, that, uh, that's a correction. So, um, regarding trends for containers, anyway, the same thing applies. We did have the first half year definitely didn't uh, see the growth which we had expected. Uh, but as I had uh, again uh, previously also uh, um, explained um, in uns maybe uh, in some channels that uh, these trends were uh, because of one-off incidents which interrupted our uh, smooth flow of our trains. Unfortunately, when we thought that uh, the first uh, half was an unfortunate period and we were getting over it, then uh, we have been affected one by uh, the floods in Chennai and because there was some uh, that was a great impact on our volumes in the south and also uh, we uh, definitely feel that the export import imbalance that is happening now dip in exports which also uh, it makes it um, a little difficult for us to run our trains because as you know uh, empty running uh, would impact us uh, very harshly so we would be a little more rational while running trains there uh, but the good news is we have been uh, progressing very well in uh, uh, CAPEX uh, and uh, we have succeeded, as you already said, we have succeeded in uh, um, getting approvals for two more uh, terminals from our board. This is total of 18 uh, against 13 we had uh, planned. That CAPEX is going well. So we think this is a temporary phase. Even the dip in exports, I think it is uh, something which uh, would uh, pass. Now the good period, uh, the good quarter starts, I think January always has been the, the last quarter has always been the healthiest quarter for us and uh, we feel that uh, we might be able to make up some of these volumes. We see a recovery trend in our uh, movement also. So I think uh, that's, uh, we can expect uh, better things by the turn of the year. That's year. good to hear that. But, you know, ma'am, just going on how the first half has been, the follow-on impact of rail haulage hike had put pressure on volumes and margins in the first half. And with slowing trade activity, even Exim was going to get, uh, you know, further pressured. What's the overall volume growth that you're penciling in? If you could just give us, you know, ballpark figures or the percentage-wise appreciation that you do expect for second half and next year um, with the kind of traction that you're expecting. Segment. Okay, this year uh, we have uh, uh, downgraded our outlook. We had earlier started the year with an outlook for 10 to 12 percent. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the year when we realized that the first half uh, we have been impacted uh, because of one-off incidents uh, like uh, disruptions in the rail movement because of rain, agitations, etc. So we had brought it down to a single digit, like 7 to 8 percent. Now I'll stick with that. Uh, but uh, for the next year, I am sure that uh, we can definitely uh, go back to 10 to 12 percent the way we have see we are seeing things picking up in uh, industry and the demand. I think we can look at uh, a double digit growth again in the next year. Okay, uh, I just uh, you sounding a bit optimistic about maybe the second half as well. My question is if if indeed this is looking as seasonal a business. From an investor's perspective, how does it look at the growth of Concord 
over the next 18 months or maybe the next 30 odd months? Would it be fluctuating? Would it be in single digits, low single digits? Or do you think with all the focus that is happening in railways across the board, that number can improve over the course of the next two, three years? There's no doubt. I, I am an optimist, let me admit that. But I think when you look at the industry, as you yourself stated in the beginning, we, our industry reflects the health of the economy. So uh, what we see is a lot of optimism around. Our policies uh, are being put in place. This will definitely uh, start having an impact. So I see a very good prospect. 18 months is a period where I'm sure you you see a lot of uh, good things happening. and. Uh, Another added uh, point is the government is also trying to uh, emphasize uh, the shift from uh, uh, cargo traffic from road to rail. So we also think uh, policy um, help in this direction. And uh, I'm sure uh, exports which are seeing a, a temporary fall would catch up. It's, it, of course, that depends more on international uh, events. But I, I'm sure that uh, these all uh, many things, a lot of positives are like numerous. So I am sure that uh, 18 months is a, a period where you will see growth. There is no doubt about it. And I think the lower side we have already seen, and it's in the past. I don't think we'll go there again. As I said, one-off effects was the main impact, but uh, the haulage rate hike during December last was a little heavy. But then government, um, now I think the Indian Railways, uh, like you see, we have already completed one year since last December. They haven't uh, hiked the rate so far, and I don't think there will be any unreasonable uh, hikes uh, uh, again because last time uh, whatever happened, uh, the impact has been seen, and uh, there will be a conscious effort, I am sure, I am positive, that will be a conscious effort to uh, make policies, including tariff policies, to aid, uh, help of, uh, aid or help the ship from road to rail. So that will benefit Concord. You know, we always tend to look at uh, Conquer as just a company which is only transporting container traffic. But that's one part of your business. The other big part of your business is the warehouse. You've invested a lot. You've invested a lot in uh, land acquisition. You're working very closely with the state government. And if GST is indeed implemented, which it would be one day, you will be a sizable gainer. So walk us through the big picture there. What happens to your warehouse business? Yeah. So we, I think, uh, woke up very early to the fact that uh, there is going to be a large gap in rail connected warehousing uh, in the country, especially with GST coming and general, uh, you know, the way the industry was picking up and reviving after the recessionary years. So uh, three years back, we put in place this CapEx plan, which was uh, like enhancing our expenditure on, uh, on such investments by four times. So we, are, we have gone a long way in this path. Now we have spent about 3,000 crores already out of the 6,000 we have planned over a five-year period. We started off with a plan for 13 uh, logistic parks, and now we call it logistic parks because, as I said, we are no more looking at ourselves as mere rail uh, uh, transporters. We are also looking, uh, 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 we are looking at ourselves as logistic services providers, multimodal logistic service providers. So the terminals which we have, which by size have been upscaled by over 10 times where we had terminals at the size of like 225 acres we have term we are going to have terminals in the size of like 250 acres so this uh, um, increase in size is going to enable us to provide our customers with all additional value added services logistic services at our own terminals like a customer need not uh, transport our goods through uh, his goods through our transport our rails come to our terminal and take it elsewhere for warehousing. He doesn't have to do that anymore. He'll be able to do, provide, uh, he'll be able to receive all the services at our terminals. Our, um, the kind of uh, uh, warehouses we make will also suit to the commodities in that particular locality. If, if, if it is food grains, uh, if it is cement, we'll have a specialized warehousing for them, probably silos. If there is requirement for uh, air conditioned or controlled atmosphere warehouses, we would be making them. So we sure. will uh, try to uh, provide right. yeah we'll try to provide right. the consolidated or uh, you know single window service for the customers so in light of all of these ma'am uh, I would want a sense of some numbers that will come 
from your end, uh, from the company's end, that is, say NFI 16, say NFI 17, as difficult as it may be right now, give us some ballpark estimates. See, it's not only uh, GST. There are other external uh, events which we also are looking forward to. Like, for example, the dedicated freight corridor has announced that some of the uh, lines which it will be completed, some phases of it could also be uh, aligned to the present path in the northern uh, part of the country so that the speed of trains and the cap capacity of the Indian Railways to run more trains is enhanced. So we are also looking forward to such events. So all these events, in addition to GSC, are external. So I don't think I can put a figure of where, what we be in another three years. It will be very difficult. It also depends on all these things. But I think if we feel in the company that if we, uh, before the entire uh, infrastructure is in place, when our in, uh, capacity is going to improve by maybe uh, five or six times what we have today, including warehousing also. So before that, I think we will at least reach in the next, uh, uh, say, 24 months, two years, we should come back to uh, a growth of volume growth of about uh, 14 to 15 percent, which has been a traditional volume growth of Concord before the recession uh, struck. So I think that would be a very good with the base now, the present base, that will be a very good growth. And of course, uh, when that is, if all these events happen, the GST implementation and uh, uh, the DF, uh, DFC coming into operation, all this happens, then, uh, you know, uh, the growth would be, um, figures would be mind-boggling. Like even in the first year, when all such infrastructure and these events take place, our growth could be like 100%. Final question, if I look at your return ratios, your return ratios have come down and that's largely because you, you are generating a lot of cash and that cash is not getting deployed. As a result, your return ratios are coming down. So do you have a plan in place to give out more dividend? Because for, for an external investor, your return ratios do matter and there has been a linear drop there. Uh, we follow... We are a public sector undertaking. We follow the government uh, guidelines in this regard. Uh, and uh, in fact, we have been marginally higher than what the government uh, guideline prescribes. And uh, regarding dividend, it's up, up to the uh, shareholders. And uh, I think it, we have been very consistent and we will continue to be consistent. Any bottom line growth would reflect an additional dividends as per the present policy being followed by the government. Anything else, it will depend on uh, what our shareholders decide. Broadly, in order to capture the entire direct, direct freight corridor opportunity, your investments are in place and your land acquisition has been done. What I'm trying to gather for you is that could there yes. be additional substantial capex which will come in in FI17, FI18, or you're done with bulk of your uh, expenditure? No, the, uh, exactly. This uh, for DFC, the complementary infrastructure is what they're spending on now. It needs uh, to, uh, all this has to be put in place before the DFC comes. Once the DFC is there. I don't think uh, we'll, we only have a maintenance expenditure because the capacity of the existing assets increases automatically. Like one wagon, which has a uh, turnaround uh, of like say um, 24 hours today, um, um, may turn around, you know, like in one fourth of the time. So that is the kind of at least a minimum four times uh, additional capacity will be created just because the external infrastructure is in place. So uh, I don't think CapEx, I think our CapEx spend, uh, when we complete this 6,000 crores in the next two years, I think we would have spent uh, nearly this 6,000 crores. Uh, we will only need a maintenance expense of uh, maybe uh, 800 crores a year at that time. I mean, factoring in costs. It was so good chatting with you. Uh, unless, unless we have, yeah, yeah, unless no. we have other external projects like port projects. Sorry. Mm, no, no. Uh, I, I'm glad that we had this interaction. I think it could go on and on. But it would be lovely to have you again very, very soon, maybe when some developments happen as well. Thanks for taking the time out and joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you too. Thank you. That's a clear view on Concord if you wanted one, uh, quite frankly. And a, a place to bet on if you indeed believe in the railway resurgence over the course of the next two, three years. Suresh Prabhu is definitely talking that. This may be one good way to play it.
okay. story that is not going to unfold overnight. It's going to be, it's for the patient investor. It is, it is. It is for the patient yeah. and the large investor. Certainly not the fly by the night <laughs> to once. But okay, um, uh, time is running short on the show. Let's get in one more management. It's been extremely active, has been TD Par. A lot of mutual funds have shown interest as well. 